I think it's like a 60 year old guy who's had a prior fusion by another surgeon. I think uh, he used the standalone cage mm -hmm. at the levels below at uh, 4556. And he achieved solid fusion. This was done about five years ago. Okay. Then he started developing uh, symptoms of myelopathy uh, level above because then he started having wearing out the levels above. You know, so there's a spandy going mm -hmm. on and the x ray. And you can see there's some uh, spinal cord kinking at 3 4. T, this is pre op CT. You can see there's some spandy going on here and uh, obviously there's a spandy some slippage i didn't want to stop the fusion here because you know this is already going bad here too yeah so i didn't want to put a plate in here either because of the uh there's such a high force there you know at, at yeah. that level so i used the uh, amandia standalone cage those two other levels as you can see here i did uh i made actually a separate incision on the left side way up high and I went in there and I did a C3, C4 ACDF and I did a C2, C3 ACDF. So can you uh, uh, go step by step, explain yeah. your C2, 3 incision from the skin down to the bone? Can you, um, if, you if, if you can share like, you know, the, just uh, on, your, on your own neck or on a picture, yeah, show yeah. us exactly the step. I think that's a huge learning point. I had the ENT uh, check him out before, make sure both of his vocal cords are intact because mm -hmm. I'm, I want to. You want to go on the side. If there has been damage to the vocal cord. You want to go on the same side. So That's this case, so a patient had uh, both vocal cords intact. So I went on the left side because I'm. I always go on the left side. You know? well, let me give a little. I think since we are going to broad uh, podcast this out, um, yeah. the recurrent laryngeal nerve goes all the way, make a loop around the major vessel down below and comes back up and innervates our pharynx. What that means for, uh, the, for our ACDF that during the approach, because we are very close to that and it runs with the neurovascular bundle, we may damage it. Like I'm a right-handed person and I always go from the right. Some people go always from the left. Either way, every surgeon can go either right or left. And the point is that if recurrent laryngeal nerve get damaged on one side, you, we don't even notice it in the regular exam. And it has practically no consequences. But if you damage it both sides, it's a catastrophic event. People cannot swallow, cannot talk, they cannot breathe even. So meaning that if a surgeon has done an ACDF from the left side, what I do on my side, I make sure that the ENT, look with the endoscope to the vocal cord because then you can see that one side of the vocal cord are limp. And if that is the case, I will never go from the right side. If it's already damaged on the left side, I will never go from the right side because the consequences can be catastrophic. So meaning that I still go from the side that is damaged. So because then uh, the other healthy side is not a danger. But I think the immunity... Uniqueness of this case is that doing ACDF in the C2 or 3 is a completely different animal. This is not a irregular approach. This is a pretty big deal. Uh, once patient is positioned, you got to make sure that patient's neck is fairly extended because you want to get the mandible out of the way. Obviously, I had uh, extend, you know, the monitoring going on. So I, I, put, I put two, you know, two bolsters in the back of the neck. You know, you got a couple here, you got to kind of tape it up like that. Important thing is you got to make sure that patient's completely paralyzed. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It. You know what I mean? You don't want to fight the tongue. You don't want to fight any muscle contraction by the patient. You got to make sure patient has a zero twitch. It's absolutely flaccid, completely paralyzed. Okay. okay? And I make incision at C3, C4 because I'm, I cannot make incision C2, C3. Show me, show me, on, your own, show me on, your, on your neck uh, exactly where you did the incision. Your, Dr. Kim goes all this from the left, so you guys know. Yeah, five finger breadth above. So it's just from the middle line, some, somewhere way high here. So on, the bo on the mandible jaw, on the, on the uh, border of the mandible. Yeah, yeah, just just uh, between you know, just okay. the mandible and the middle line, and and, and uh, more not exactly, you know, a little laterally, or uh, did you start at the midline, or did you go a well, little? I, I always make it from the midline to the uh, you know about two inch laterally. 
You know okay, what I mean? Got it. Got it. Okay. So, so the next this, step. At yeah. that point, at that point, sternocleidomastoid is far lateral, so it's right, not right, exactly. Right? And then you do a uh, an omohyoid as well. It's below you. It's not right, in your right, right. way. Omohyoid. Right? I, I don't have to mess around with the omohyoid. Okay. Yeah. So what is the what is the next after the fascia? What is the next you see and dissect? So we have to make a skin incision. Okay. Okay. So I make a skin incision and I use a needle needle tip cautery. Okay. You know, fine point uh, is a Megadine needle protected needle tip. Okay. So I go to the middle needle, needle tip and over the years I used to use a Cushing uh, tooth tooth held uh, pickup to uh, dissect through the tissues. And in this case, I, there's some chance that I might go into some bleeding. Mm -hmm. You know, so I have a uh, vascular clips, microvascular clips, and I use a debakey. Okay. Okay. I use a debakey. I use a fine uh, metal bomb scissors, and I basically pick it up, spread, cut, pick it up, spread, cut. In this case, I did run into the uh, some uh, higher higher up branches of the. Uh, you know, carotid, external carotid artery, which is a facial artery and vein. Okay. Okay, and the superior thyroid mm -hmm. artery and vein. So I, I had to clip those. Yeah, I mean, and unilaterally, we know from our experience, mm -hmm. you can clip and uh, dissect them as you wish. It has no consequences. That's a, yeah. that's a pretty safe uh, kind of, you know, uh, approach to... Uh, yeah, so I'm kind of going from laterally to medially and... Uh, yeah, so may I ask you, under the fascia, under the platysma, yeah. you uh, practically, um, you just dissect the uh, thyroid uh, vessels and then practically, I think you're very close to the anterior part of the C2, C3, correct? Yes, yes. In, in a regular ACDF, you are able to mobilize the pharynx and the larynx because mm -hmm. it is mobile down below. But right. that high up, it is uh, actually fixed to the, the floor of the mouth. And right, right. Are you, are you able to, you know, when you go there, you go at an angle, but then are you able to swing it and be able to go straight down, or is it a difficult thing to do? The problem is that uh, as you go deeper, you get, you get hang up by the uh, most superficial structures. So yeah. I, I got a little bit exposed uh, deep down there. I... I uh, come back up to the superficial area and I cut through more, more of the uh, fascia and subcutaneous tissue and uh, more superficial thing. Okay. You know, then, then you get a less resistance by the surface and then you I'm, gradually enlarge it like that. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys know, probably there are less than 10 people on the planet able to, or uh, willing to do C2, 3 ACDF. So this is a huge utility if you can uh, to bring it that we in the inspired spine, we have experience with this kind of approach. Well, you know, C2 traditionally has been open mouth kind of uh, trend, you know, trans oral, but that is a uh, have done that. This patient stayed, this patient was discharged overnight stay. Okay, and that is I the mean, advantage. I mean, you know, I mean, which is crazy because I use the Exparel on the back side, yeah. you know. So uh, let me, let and me. as well, I think I need what I need to say for the, the folk that are listening to this is that uh, Dr. Kim was talking about the, tra the transoral approach. For the C2 approach, generally, what we do, we open the mouth, we go to the back of the mouth, we uh, cut it uh, vertically, and then once we push the tissue away, we are uh, actually anterior to C2, 3, where Dr. Kim was describing, but that by definition, exposes the tissue to the flora of the mouth. In some cases, if you need bigger approach, which is done, and I have done the surgery in my uh, the residency time, we even split the jaw. We literally cut the jaw and uh, we open up the jaw with the ENT help. And then we, uh, you have a much bigger approach. But these surgeries, none of them is a surgery that patient go home next day. So the utility of this is if you can do it technically is that 
you get all the benefit of the ACDF, which is faster recovery, faster discharge, and so on. But technically, it's very challenging. Okay, um, if you want to make it bigger, you, you can just go ahead through your steps now through your. Okay, so you can see this is the post-op X-ray. So after so that approach to level ACDF, it took me about two hours to do the to do the finish the procedure with uh, just no real bleeding. Okay, something like this revision. I always use a transamic acid, TXA. I give him a one gram. And that basically knocks out all the, you know, venous bleeding, oozing, and all of that. So I lost 5 cc of blood from two-level ACDF in the front. Okay. okay. Then I flip the patient over, and I just put some screws. And uh, the screws that you see is a C2 screw. That's a power screw. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, they are different. You can use a lamina screw, or you could use uh, different screws. But I use the power screw. It worked pretty well. I think this is like 2.8 millimeters uh, long, uh, 28 millimeters long and, uh, you know, 3.5 millimeter. Uh, so I got an excellent fixation. And the other, the other screws are a lot of mass screws up there. So okay. you put the part screws and when I put the part screws, I do a little bit of laminotomy. I palpate the inner aspect of the C2 pedicle, mm -hmm. make sure I'm actually putting a little more medially. Because you don't want to stay away from the vertebral artery, you know. So you, you have to, entry point is uh, just uh, at the uh, midpoint of a C2, C3 facet. Just about a millimeter higher, that's entry point. You drill it and you go about 10 degree medially and uh, superiorly. Okay. And I, I, I do progressive drilling technique. I don't use an awl, anything like that. I, I drill by uh, two millimeter by two millimeter. What I learned when you do big cases like this, uh, I usually give it some decadron because invariably they're going to complain of some swallowing difficulties. Mm -hmm. So if you give yeah. a decadron, maybe a couple doses, eight milligrams, you know, they, they do better in terms of swallowing. Kind of prof prophylactic decadron, you know, for the yeah. swallowing. Yeah. yeah, that's a very interesting case. Um, yeah, uh, that's, that's it. <laughs>